Well, welcome everybody to Miracle Monday. And today we welcome our brother, Louis Miguel Falcao, as our guest speaker today. Louis, nicknamed Luigi, which is nothing spiritual, is a rogue, seemingly acting as a biker dude messenger in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Today's topic, as described by Luigi, is a crazy story about me and A Course in Miracles. I'll tell you a crazy story about how A Course in Miracles came into my life and why I seem to create more forgiveness lessons amongst the course community than anyone else teaching the course. Blue G hosts ACIM South Africa, a group dedicated to studying the non-dualistic mystical teachings of the Christ mind, so that we all remember that through forgiveness, we will knowingly be the one self who is the Holy Son of God. The Facebook group is a radically uncompromising and unapologetic Facebook group of non-dualistic mystics, rogues, illusionists, and batshit crazy people on their inward path to awakening from the hellish dream of separation. All sinners are welcome. <laughs> so we welcome you, Luigi. Uh, I keep I keep thinking about Muji, and then I think, no, Luigi, <laughs> go ahead and, and just take your time and let it fly and do your thing. <clears throat> Yeah, thank you for for inviting me, and, and and really glad to meet all of you, and blessings to all of you. So I'll start right away. So disclaimer: everything I'm about to tell you is not true. Okay, we'll start there. So don't believe a single word I tell you, but it's a good story. It's just like a bedtime story. So, um, I was born with past life memory in total detail. As a young boy, I remembered ha having been on this planet countless times. And some of my memories were little snippets, just little scenes, but some of them were lifelong memories. I, I had, I mean, at the age of as far back as I can remember, at the age of four, I knew how to drive a car. You know, I remembered smoking cigarettes, something I wanted to do this whole life, which I only started in my late 40s. Um, and and not just lives on this planet, but very detailed lives on other planets where sometimes we look humanistic, but sometimes we look like trees. So I have this very detailed um, past life memory. And I guess I just didn't swallow the amnesic juice before I you know, projected onto this earth again. And that was a very simple life. I grew up in Mozambique. And then moved to South Africa at the age of six, 1974. And what was a really pleasant, joyful experience, Mozambique in South Africa, just turned into one hell of a nightmare. My very first day of school, um, we had to catch a bus, which was about a 13 kilometer distance to the school. And we had to wait outside the, the farm and we jumped onto the bus. And um, the bus said whites only. I couldn't read English in those days. And I got beaten up so badly that I ended up in hospital for nine months because I caught a whites only bus. And uh, being dark skinned, I, mean, I wasn't allowed on a whites only bus. So my childish, my childhood years was just filled with discrimination and racism. And there's two types of people, fight or flight. And I didn't know how to run and I still can't. So guess what I learned to do? I learned to fight. And by the time I was 16 years old, I was national kickboxing champion in South Africa. And I was participating in all sorts of underground fights. And one thing I could do is fight physically, really. I, was, I became vicious and incredibly vengeful. And yet deep inside, there was always this compassionate, kind side to me. And so I took on this cause of protecting the weaker ones. And so kids that were bullied and, and, and ostracized became my circle of friends. Of course, today they've grown, they've all grown up and become, you know, really successful human beings. They're mostly the intelligent ones. From day dot, I've had this incredible yearning to understand the truth. I've wanted to know why did I come back into this form? Why do I have these memories? And how come no one else does? From a very young age, I realized that, because I used to hear voices, 
from a very young age, I, I realized that the voices I'm hearing are people's thoughts. And people think some horrific things. They'll smile and say hello. And back of the mind, they're, 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 they're thinking, I hope this kid doesn't know what I'm thinking. He's just freakish. And they would, so it was very hurtful to hear thought or to see the symbols that people are imagining. Um, I then had a very interesting episode at the age of nine. I used to see this being, and I had no idea what this thing was. And this being one day appeared to me physically in my bedroom, or so the psychosis appeared. And this being called me Urialilu. He didn't call me by my name and introduced himself as Uriel. And he would refer to me as Urialilu, as in a cluster of, of group names, and would refer to me specifically as Mikhaililu. Now, my second name is Miguel, so I assumed he just couldn't pronounce it. And this being then stayed with me for most of my life, up until my, my mid-30s. Whenever he communicated with me, it was always incredibly accurate. So from a young age, as a young boy, and I made a shitload of money and bought my first motorcycle that way, I would, I would be able to tell people what happened to them in total detail. I could communicate with their past loved ones. So I was learning to be psychic, and it was incredibly accurate. Dates, places, names, in total infinite detail. Pretty soon, because there weren't sonars and scans back in those days, Pregnant woman had come to me to know the sex of the baby and I was never wrong. Total accurate. And I could even, I would even say your daughter or son wants to be called so-and-so, you know, and, and she, and she wants to be named after your grandmother that lived in whatever and became freakishly ac accurate. And, and as many people as were interested, they were just as afraid of me. Um, as I said, my life was incredibly violent. So, Growing up looking different and sounding different and being dark-skinned in a, in a predominantly conservative, racist, white community meant it was a physical threat all the time. As I said, my first day of school, I got beaten up so badly on because I caught a whites-only bus that I spent nine months in hospital, lost my eye and raptured spleen and broken ribcage. So from a young age, I learned to ride a motorcycle and I was riding to school every day. Deep within, there was this desire to truly understand why am I doing this and why is there such vengeance and why is there such cruelty? And nothing I read, I mean, as much as I read the Bible cover to cover 30 times and a variety of Bibles, I just couldn't get the answer. I had a really close relationship with my Catholic priest. I was an altar boy, believe it or not. And he was really open to this because he was a Second World War tank commander and he's his, um, his tank had been, been struck by a German shell and everybody in the tank was killed except him. He lost his toes. And in that instant, he had a vision. He saw Mother Mary, crawled, leopard crawled out, um, was taken care of by French farmers. And so he had this vision. So when I spoke of my visions and I spoke of the things I was seeing, he wasn't closed off to it. And him and I would often have these wonderful discussions about what God is, the nature of reality, and so forth. From a very young age, from, from 9, 10 onwards, I was already having these conversations. And after a while, I actually was invited to hang out with the monks. And I used to sleep out at the monastery in Rustenburg. It's about 150 k's from Johannesburg every weekend. And I would hang out with the monks and the brothers. And I really was interested in, in understanding the nature of God, the nature of reality. Anyway, fast forward to my final year of high school. And in South Africa, you had two choices when you finished high school. You either went to study or you went to the military. And I didn't have the money. I'm a policeman's son. And so I had no choice. And I ended up in the police special forces and spent nine months in Angola, which was a war going on on the border of South Africa. Uh, my very first day out into the war, um, I watched one of my closest friends get blown up right in front of me. So my life was just a series of these really harsh experiences, which just drew me down into sorrow. It's just getting more and more hurt by all these experiences. Anyway, I managed to finish that service and, and I decided to go and study architecture because I'm creative and I can draw. 
um, believe it or not, as an architect, studying architecture, I, I paid for my studies working part-time as a bodyguard. How's that for a paradoxical juxtaposition, you know? And, and that was life. And by the time I was 29 years old, I was a millionaire. Ambitious and driven, and I had every conceivable toy and the Ferrari and the watches and the expensive suits and the model wife. But man, I was so miserable. I was so unhappy. No matter what I put my mind to, I could achieve it. I could imagine it, visualize it. I could make it manifest. If I wanted something, I'd, I'd, I'd buy it. If I wanted to turn something around, if I wanted to grow a business, it was just visualize, imagine, believe, create. So whatever I wanted to create, I created. And then lucky for me, at the age of 33, I was diagnosed with a, with a brain tumor around the pituitary gland, an uncurable. That was it. You're going to die. So I set whatever I could in motion. I made sure that my family was taken care of. I bought my sister's homes. I bought my brother a home. I bought my mother a home. I made sure there was money set aside for my nephew's educations. I made sure that my wife was going to be taken care of. And then I just sort of resigned to the fact, this is it, I'm going to die. Fell asleep, went into a coma, and that's it. That's all I remember of this world. Next thing, I'm back there, back in the spirit world. And this time round, it was an experience that I hadn't experienced in my past life recollections, is that I got to ascend to a certain group level. There was only six of us in this group. And I recognized this being that I'd been seeing throughout my life as one of that group. And it felt like I was there for 20 years. I've written a whole book about it, the experience that we have in, in the spirit world, the various levels there are, the angelic realm in the spirit world and why they are the angelic realm, the different the seven different layers of, of angel phyla and what their functions are in this dream of ours. Of course, I didn't at that time realize it was the dream. Um, and then I had this conversation with this essence energy, which was so unique that nothing else in the spirit world was like it. Of course, I now recognize I was connecting with Christ's mind. And it pretty much gave me the instruction that you can either come back and do the nappy thing all over again, or you can just get back into your body and just revive it. And it was an instant. It was a thought. And the next thing I was taking a breath and I was back in the, I was in a body bag in the morgue. I'd been dead for four hours. So that freaked everybody out because I leopard crawled out of that, that fridge, stark naked. And, um, you know, they had to phone my mother and say, hey, come back to the hospital. You know, your son that just died four hours ago, is he still alive? So I just freaked everybody out. I freaked the hospital out. I had to find, I had to sign NDAs and they, they made sure I got paid so I'd be quiet and never reveal the name of the hospital again because they were afraid of getting sued for misdiagnosis because you've got a scan of a tumor and the next scan is completely clear. There's a scar where the tumor was, but the tumor's gone. And that just freaked everybody out. Of course, I woke up. Nine months and four hours had passed and my wife had divorced me and remarried. <laughs> and a coma is like going to sleep. You go to sleep and you wake up and it just feels like the next morning. You don't realize nine months have passed. And so there I am, 33 years old, and I have to start from scratch. And of course, by now, I'm completely broke because I've given everything away. And um, a couple of months later, Zoom Zoom was born. And, um, and that just brought me back onto my feet. I was the national strategist on, on the brand Mazda, Zoom Zoom, before you know how to make your money again. But what was really curious is I had this entire past life and life between life memory that I didn't know what to do with. Anyway, I finished my doctorate in psychology and I wanted to, to, to do a dissertation um, on post-trauma. And anyway, the very first person, the very first client that I had was a girl struggling with leukemia. And in actual fact, the, the only reason her parents brought to her to me was she was in such pain, they wanted me to hypnotize her to take her pain away. So I did. I hypnotized her and asked her to go back to when the pain started. Of course, she slipped back into a life four and a half thousand years ago and then attested to the spirit world in exactly the same way I'd imagine, you know, that I'd experienced. So I realized it wasn't my imagination. Didn't dream the whole damn thing up. 
and then three and a half thousand regressions later, seven years later, three and a half thousand people under hypnosis attested the exact same details of the spirit world. And that was the beginning. And I wrote my first book. Please don't read it because it's inaccurate. It's not true. And then I wrote my second book. And please don't read that because that's also bullshit. And um, and then Disappearance of the Universe landed my post box. And that triggered the whole Course in Miracles. And as soon as I got into the Course in Miracles, it was complete and total clarity. I realized first dream, spirit world, the secret dream. We then project into form. We project into duality in order to experience what we are through the experience of what we are not. One dreaming mind. The extension of God, a part of it's fallen asleep. That part that has fallen asleep is the dreaming mind, the sun. It's dreamt this entire thing up. We're always in direct communication with it. It is the essence energy that we are. Spirit, another word for that, spirit. We're dreaming it all of it up. Um, the Course in Miracles is direct communication from our awake part of the mind. That awake mind, Christ mind, right-mindedness, is continually communicating with it. It is the essence energy that animates us. It is our life spark. When Helen heard the voice, had Helen been raised Buddhist, she would have heard Buddha. She was raised Christian. She heard the word Jesus. It's a representation of an echo still in the dream. There is no more Jesus. He's dissolved into right-mindedness. Now, there's what was Jesus is now part of the collective right mind. We're all being absorbed, reabsorbed back into that. And so my contribution to this community is for those that are ready to move into the full non-duality of a course. There's a place for the Jesus. There's a place for the angels. There's a place where Jesus holds your hand and guides you. Big brother guides you. At some stage, you have to realize it's self, talking to self. Big S self talking to illusionary small S self. Christ mind, direct communication. And that's what I do. I don't know. I still don't know why I do the videos and the talks. Um, <laughs> it just, it's just my group. It's my joyous expression. I just feel compelled to, if that's the right term, words or concessions. I know that no matter what I say, I'm going to mess it up. Um, I use, I use words that are not in the course, like energy, like, um, surrender. I've studied a variety since, you know, since the, the, 30, the tumor at 33, I've read probably over 600 books. I've gotten really deep into the Advaita Vedanta, the Upanishads. There was something missing in those non-dual texts, the Tao Te Ching. What the course has done for me is it's given me the tool to make peace with my forgetfulness, to make peace with my choosing to, to not remember myself. And my contribution is simply to those that are ready for that. No more Jesus. Jesus and I are one. I and my father are one. Christ's self, one indivisible self, the eternal extension of God's love. And um, I know that sometimes I really do piss off the community, but hey, you know, it's a gift because if you having to practice forgiveness after I've said something, then I've just offered you a great opportunity to remember yourself. And that's about it. That's all I really have to say. And like I said, forget about the whole story. Um, in my last book, which is, um, so the first book was A School Called Earth, throw that away. Um, in the last book, I've called it a school called The Universe. So the first part of the book is pretty much the school called Earth, explained from a non-dual perspective. Second part of the book takes us straight into non-duality and brings in many of the Advaita, Taoist, and Course in Miracles non-duality understanding through. Um, I've written it for people that are looking. I'm not, I haven't written it for the course community. The course community doesn't need to read anything but the course and miracles. I've written it for people that are getting onto non-duality, but not finding answers, um, in non-dual books where, you know, it could be incredibly disruptive because if nothing means anything and, and all you see is meaningless, 
and you don't give people a bit of hope, you don't offer them the opportunity for full transcendence while realizing nothing is real. And we need hope until we become the hope bringer. Mm, and um, that's what I was hoping that, hoping that a school called the universe would do. It's doing incredibly well and and um, hopefully it'll be translated into German and Spanish soon as well. That's me. Any questions, anything you want to ask? Thank you so much, Luigi. Now, I just wondered, and I know Lloyd is going to say something here, but right at this juncture, I'd like to invite anybody that has any questions to feel free to put your hand up electronically, or you can always type it into the chat as well. Uh, you know, we're just going to open this up now and let the Holy Spirit, whatever. We're just going to do our thing like we always do. Go ahead. No, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, okay. I, thought... I mean, uh, Luigi said it all. <laughs> I mean, it's so precise. It's really, it's yeah, uh, but truth. One of the, one, one extra thing I'd like to add is um, actually Lloyd, both you and Steve have touched on this. So bear with me if I'm regurgitating is we have a tendency to nitpick. And so, um, you know, one of us says consciousness and the other one says awareness. Rupert Spira, for example, uses the two synonymously. I make a big distinction between consciousness, which is to me ego, dreaming mind, and awareness, which is Christ mind. Right. But ultimately, does it really matter? Because the ultimate truth is silence thoughts. Right, yeah. And abiding in the presence. And one of the things we tend to do as, as course students is we, we compare teachers. And that's just pure judgment, of course. And we we like to find fault, and you know, it's 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 like the the church and community who everybody's the enemy and everybody's out to get them. And if we become that, we're in trouble. Yep. What I find if I read something that I disagree with or has a different spin on it, I just smile. I do what the Holy Spirit does: smile and simply do nothing. Just smile. You know, what inside us has the need to criticize and comment and say something negative or say something stupid? If you if you were to say something that is new to me or I disagree with, especially if I disagree with it, it reinforces my understanding and my belief. Do I have to comment? Do I have to criticize? Um, and if you say something that I agree with, well, it reinforces it. So both ways you win. But the minute you get into judgment and attack or criticize, you just straight back into the dream. You know, um, Imagine I go around telling everybody that believes in angels that angels aren't real. Angels are just fragmentations of the Holy Spirit appearing to us in a palatable way. If someone needs to believe in an angel, they need to believe in an angel. Um, ultimately, it's refractions of ourselves, one indivisible self. But at, people at some level need the Jesus, the symbolic holding of hands and, and the angel that guides them or protects them and has their wings around them. Um, allow people at their own time. I mean, what is it that we need? We need patience. We need compassion. And um, and we need to be quiet. <laughs> not shoot everybody down because they have a different opinion. And especially, let's not get into comparing teachers. We're all, there's 8 billion on this planet, 8 billion thought, thought streams. And imagine spokes of a bicycle. They all, some appear to be going in completely opposite directions. We all converge on the very same center, center, which is the self, which is the Christ, which is the extension of God. That's what's important. Let's look for the commonalities as opposed to find what's wrong and what's different or what's right. There's no right and wrong. Yeah. Okay, Doreen, you go ahead and unmute yourself, Doreen. So, hi, everyone. Hi, Louis. I'm uh, currently reading uh, your book, um, A School Called Universe, published in 2022 via Kindle. I hope you can recommend that one. I think you do. <laughs> Hilarious. Can you hear me, by the way? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, good. I just want to check that I have, uh, um, that I have the right understanding uh, about something that you write about. Mm -hmm. 
what I understand is that when we lay a body down and we are in the spirit world, our experience is um, much more joyful and happier and more peaceful than when we are in the uh, earth dream. But regardless of that, we have a restlessness yeah, to go maybe. back to the earth dream when we're not awakened. Yeah. Can you uh, expound on that a little bit more? Okay, what I'm going to explain to you is quite symbolic. So when we're in this second dream, we're unaware that we're dreaming. We still are separated we still we still know ourselves as beings and as separate beings we live in clusters of of groups uh, at a variety of conscious levels and but there's this there's this something missing essence to all of us something's missing and although there is a all in all pervading all encompassing love we still feel that that love is outside ourselves we're not aware we're it and the only way I can explain this is imagine you're floating in this beautiful sphere and above the sphere is another sphere. And as you get close to the sphere, the, the essence of love intensifies, but you can't get into it. It's almost like a magnet that just doesn't like two opposing magnets. It just doesn't let you in. And every now and again in the spirit world, Spirit companions disappear, dissolve. Boom. Now, when they project into the earth, they just, I'm only talking about my own perspective of it. It seems like they, they thin out. It's like a bit of a shadow of them, but they're still present. Some of them, after they've done their incarnation, just disappear. Gone. And that's when they're getting reabsorbed into the Christ mind. And... And that makes us frustrated in the spirit world. There's a sense of something's missing. Gosh, I've got to go back. And when that builds up, when that falling builds up, there's a there's a stage where we plan our incarnations. It's like we go into a sphere and we get snippets of possible lives and we get to choose based on our awareness level. At some stage, you get so frustrated, you, you'll take anybody. You'll take whatever body you want to project me into, I'll go. And it's being scripted for us. That's when the Holy Spirit's taken over. At first, our incarnations, we think we script. The whole thing is done by an unseen hand. And, uh, of course, we're willingly compliant to come down. I mean, I could have chosen to be much better looking and much taller and far more intelligent. But there weren't any more bodies in this around. So I took this one. Can you imagine. <laughs> and, uh, that, like I said, don't believe a word I'm telling you. But the point is, there is definitely a sense of there's no conflict there, and um, but there's this frustration, and there's this, you know, everything in the spirit world's vibration. So there's no physical word because there's no mouths. We don't have. We're just energy. Um, everything's a vibration, um, and thought. And I don't know if you can call it thought, but. We're instantly aware. If you ask a question, it's instant. At a stage in my my um, spiritual journey, when I died of the brain tumor, I remember wanting to meet with the essence energy that was Buddha. And the minute I, I don't know if you can say the word think, because it's, it's the words now, it just don't explain it. But the minute I thought Buddha, the essence energy, which was Buddha, was instantly in front of me. And I realized this is the Buddha energy. And in an instant, I had his entire history on this plane. And so it went. I, I then wanted to meet with um, Ramana Maharshi. And in an instant, his essence energy was available to me. And then I wanted to meet with Jesus, and I couldn't find Jesus. There was no Jesus in the spirit world. Right. Fuck! Yeah. It's so, like, what? No, Jesus. And why not? And the minute I said, why not? It's because it's I'm Christ. I'm not Jesus. And the minute I said, Christ, I was taken to that sphere. And I couldn't get into it. And I realized 
that sphere that I couldn't get into is Christ. And instantly I recognized what was Jesus is now Christ. It's beyond this realm. We can't access it because there's something missing and I couldn't wait to go back. Because I realized there's something to recognize. And now, our, now remember, this is all happening in the realm of imagination, dream mind. So each one of us is going to have a different experience of that plane. So in that plane, I don't have wings, but I have a Harley that never runs out of fuel. In that plane, you may have you may be riding alongside me, and I'm imagining you're riding on a Harley, but in your space-time mind reference, you're on a unicorn. We're going to experience the spirit world in our own subjective reality, in our own unique way. You could be sitting having coffee with me, but you're drinking Jack Daniels in the spirit world. And both of it tastes terrible because there's nothing, no taste. So we crave, especially those of us that have very strong recollections in the spirit world of having incarnated, we crave experiences. We, and so we crave experiences because we realize it's the paradox, it's the it's the duality that that brings us into a higher state. So spirit in the spirit world are a variety of colors. So the the less conscious ones are like a yellowish color. The higher conscious ones are almost pitch black, well, like a star, like the stars at night, like you've taken a piece of the sky. And what you, what what we're all aware of in the spirit world is if you project onto earth as a yellow being, you come back blue. You jump three levels in color. Your spectrum of awareness rises exponentially when you travel to earth. When you go to other planes of physicality, you come back and yellow becomes dark yellow or maybe orange. But you go to that earth plane, you come back and you jump two, three levels. It's an incredibly harsh plane, but no matter how terribly they fucked it up on earth plane, they ascend quite a lot in the spirit plane every time they come to this miserable. And, and we get warned, as spirit beings, we get warned, don't go there. It's going to be harsh. It's not a nice place. But I also want to explain this. What a lifetime to us here in the spirit world is like you're having a cup of coffee with someone. They get up, they go to the bathroom, and they come back. You don't miss them. So when people think that their loved ones miss them because they're back in the spirit world, they don't miss you at all. You've just gone for two minutes. No one misses someone when they go to the bathroom. It's it's really an entire life. Yeah, there is feels like three minutes. As I said, I was physically dead for four hours in this plane. In the spirit world, it felt like I was there for 20 years. You know, time is not linear. But... The challenge about this whole spirit world thing, and I mean, I got caught up with it for at least 10 years, is really understanding the nature of the spirit world, is we completely miss the fact that we're dreaming. That whole thing, the whole spirit world is first dream. And and we're unaware that we've hidden sin, sin, guilt, and fear. We're unaware that we've actually hidden it. And we've hidden it so beautifully that we have to experience it in the physical world. If we were aware of sin, fear, and guilt, and the fact that we'd forgotten our, our true essence and we'd forgotten our source, we wouldn't incarnate. We'd be too scared to. And so it's been a wonderful journey to full realization. It's like if you go to the spirit world and you talk to one of the, the, <clears throat> the angelic types, the archangels are fine because they incarnate. They they come through. They very often come through as the baby that dies at you know month two or three weeks old. They'll project into form only to give the parents a lesson. But if you move into the higher levels, like the council, there's a council of these slivery things, and you ask them a question, they can't answer you. They haven't got a cooking clue as to what you're talking about. You know, it's like saying to someone who's never eaten ice cream, "What does ice cream taste like?" They just don't know. I don't know what ice cream is. And um, and that's the frustration. And that's the beauty of the dream because spirit's calling us. And that frustration we feel there is the love. It's the polar, the polarity of that frustration is the love we feel here. It wants to extend. There it wants to know. Wow. And we get warned. We get... <clears throat> so 
while you're physically here, there's only about 10, 12% of you maximum. 20, 10, 12% of you is being projected. You project 12.5%, you come through autistic. It's too much info, can't cope. And then we and then we really mess up the formula often. We do this on purpose. So um, the, the world's going through a whole woke, you know, gender crisis, for example. We are aware of that. So we project. <clears throat> so from day dot that you start incarnating, you choose a specific line of, of gender. So you'll incarnate male, 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 male. Then at one stage, you want a real lesson in diversity. You really want to experience serious discrimination and you can't even help it because it's built in. And so you incarnate as a female. First incarnation, you first time in a female form and you don't feel like a girl. You don't feel like a woman. You're so used to having incarnated for thousands of years in a male body. This female body doesn't, doesn't. So you're still attracted to females and this body's not you. And that's what we do. We'll do that on purpose to learn adversity, to learn to love self regardless of what we appear as. Man, we set ourselves up for some serious challenges <laughs> and we <laughs> as in fractured selves because we're we're just dissolving into our awake self, Christ mind. We're, it's, it's beautiful. Once you get at a certain level, that's the beauty. As you get to a certain level, and I mean levels, it's also seamless. As you get to a certain level, there's this overwhelming compassionate desire to assist the rest not realizing that you're actually only assisting self is only one of us and that's the beauty so they start coming through with high compassion they completely fuck it up in the beginning so high compassion comes through as high empathy so what happens in in the empath we suffer the other person's delusion because we're interconnected and we feel other people's pain we feel their suffering and then we suffer with them as we progress up that consciousness level, empathy becomes compassion, passion of the Christ. So we feel other people's pain. We don't take it real anymore because we've transcended our own and then we rise each other above the battlefield. It's one beautiful lava ball of sort of melt and remelt and you know reproject. And it's just every second in space time we're ascending. The whole dream is ascending since the Big Bang. The Big Bang was the beginning of our dream. Before that, there was just truth, light, ever extending. So the Big Bang was the beginning of us awakening. So Big Bang, just instances before the Big Bang, we were dark sleep, complete darkness. And Holy Spirit said, wake up. And the minute the Holy Spirit spoke into the dream, light, and we're what? light infused with us and we extend it and that's what the big bang is it's the beginning so we didn't start awakening when jesus came to this earth we've been awakening since the universe took form the universe is the awakening mind it's awakening to self through space time we need distance and time and polarity in order to realize what we are through the experience of what we're not okay we have and we like Yep, just... We just love kicking ourselves up the Uranus. That's it. <laughs> we have three people with their hands up. So we're just going to, to carry on here. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Raj, uh, Raj, I'm going to call you Raj. You go ahead and unmute yourself. Yes. Uh, hi. Hi, Luchi. Hi. Uh, it was great to hear that you are born and have lived in Mozambique. I'm from Mozambique. Okay. And speaking from Mozambique, so okay. I just want to know. I've uh, I've done the course, uh, and I have read also about Ramana Maharishi and Buddha and Advaita. I do have theoretical understanding. Uh, I know the theory, but somehow I'm struggling struggling to let go the judgment, the judgmental mind that I have, and to do the forgiveness. I do understand what projection means. I'm, I'm projecting on everything else, things that I don't accept about myself, whether that's good or bad. And it, But sometimes when I, as I enter into interaction with people, I become very defensive, judgmental, right and wrong, black and white, and all this uh, duality takes place. Mm. Now it is so intense and it, because it's interacting, 
uh, later on, of course, as I go back and I'm alone, I start having all these self-judgments again. Like, I should have kept quiet. I should have listened rather than, than you know, giving my opinion. Um, so I even know what forgiveness is uh, in terms of theory again. But not it's not a knowing. It's not a knowledge. It's not in the cells yet. So how do I transform this? The how can I how can I put it? Probably transform this uh, judgment into forgiveness. How can I release this? Beautiful. Right. Beautiful. Um, Roger, it's actually incredibly simple. You're going to kick yourself now when I tell you this. <laughs> stop trying. Just stop. Of course, it's concept. Of course, it's theoretical. True knowing is silent. You want to hear the truth? I'm going to. I'm now going to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Here it is. <laughs> so you're aware you're becoming aware you're catching yourself afterwards take the pressure off no rush no rush be yourself you don't have to give up anything you don't have to do anything you don't have to behave in a certain way the judge you're catching your you're catching your thoughts now realize this they're not your thoughts you're like a radio. That's it. We're all radios, which the dreaming mind plays through and experiences itself. Not a single thought we think is ours. The only real thought is the thought that of God, God's thought, love. And we don't know what that is yet. The essence of what we are is love, but we haven't fully realized it. And we only really fully realize it as we transcend it. And that happens at the moment of transcendence. Until then, have some fun. Take yourself less seriously. If you lose your shit, you lose your shit. If you catch yourself afterwards, don't beat yourself up for having lost your shit. It's all okay. It's all the most important thing is be kind to self. Be patient with self. Be compassionate with self. You're steeping into it. It just evolves ever so gently. Ramana Maharashi, young age, eight, it triggered him by 16, he was there. Jesus, he goes to Egypt, very young age, nine. He goes through the whole initiation process at the age of 13 in Egypt, transcendence. These fractures of ourselves came through already highly, highly awake. They came for one last incarnation. In that second final incarnation, you find that polar opposite and the two of you meet. When you return from spirit world, those two come through as one. An avatar as two polarities. Adam and Eve, the spare rib, he finally gets his spare rib, spare rib back, okay? And in his final incarnation, those avatars that have walked this earth, the Jesus, the Buddha, the Krishna, the Nimkaroli Baba, Sai Baba, those, those, you know, those beautiful beings that have come through as the great master teachers, in their final incarnation, avatar, the masculine and the feminine are fully joined, no more judgment. And it comes up through at a very young formative year. And it's always got something to, their the, the main concentration is death. Jesus went through the death initiation in the, Egypt, in the Egyptian um, schools of mysteries. He went through the whole process. There's documented information about what he went through. Um, the lost years of Isa. Um, Jesus and the, and the teachings of the, uh, of the Far East. There's so much written about that. What we need to do is lay off ourselves back the fuck off yeah. just back off guys be good to yourself it's okay someone pisses you off you tell him to fuck himself <laughs> whoa whoa that was me i've just projected myself oh okay don't beat yourself up now i'm sorry please forgive me thank you i love you we are healed move forward it does it again choose again whoa whoa okay mm, mm, just a little bit of a growl Good bastard move off it comes again next time around catch yourself you smile you realize it's do i'm i'm doing this unto myself it's the ego trying to capture me again okay third time around i just smile 
Fourth time round, it's a distant echo, someone acting over there somewhere. Yeah. It comes again. You read about it in the newspaper. It comes again. Someone mentions something about something. The dreaming mind doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Uh, Nim Karoli Baba, he had these little blanket, you know, last day of his life. He throws his blanket off, runs around stark naked. I am free. I am free. To your last dying breath, that chatter is still going on. What you've done, that radio has just turned down the volume. Yeah. It's not your thoughts. It, it appears to be your thoughts because the same thought stream, sin, fear, and guilt through your filter body mind projection is going to play out through a story that you think you've experienced. And so it repeats itself through what you think is your unique story. It's the same thought. I forgot what I am. I imagined a God. I imagined a God that must be like myself. As I created parts of the universe, if I didn't like it, I destroyed it. I made these funny little animals that went around chewing each other, called them dinosaurs. I didn't like them. I threw a big stone. I ruined them. Maybe what creates me, created me is going to ruin me too. Maybe whatever created me is going to destroy me. The false God concept. The God of the Bible is the God called the dreaming mind. The dreaming mind dreams himself, projects himself into the dream like we dream every single night. We project ourselves. We localize ourselves into the dream. The dreaming mind, the fallen asleep dreaming mind, projects itself as Adam. Then he projects his dreaming. Then he takes a spare rib and turns it into a woman. Now you've got a talking, walking spare rib that eats apples and talks to snakes and causes fucking chaos. Okay? <laughs> the whole thing is a dream. He had to, he had to design her to be He's polar opposite. You want to meet a truly happy person? They're not married. They've transcended marriage. Shag, marry, kill. That stuff's designed to fuck you up, but it's designed to bring you into the forgiveness lesson because you love her so much or you love him so much, you keep sabotaging yourself to appease them, which is really you want to see the face of Christ in one another. And you're hoping that you can induce it in someone else. And then we do that to ourselves. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the greatest of us all? Who's the prettiest of us all? I am. But who's the I that am? You see, the I am. Ego disguises I am. And now I'm supposed to be spiritual, but I'm judging myself. I'm beating myself up. I'm having these experiences that I'm supposed to be spiritual. Maybe I should wear a white robe and grow a beard and wear sandals and sound like Jesus. We have no fucking clue what Jesus sounded like. No clue. We only have what the Christian church told us, and we know that's all bullshit. We have no clue. So don't try and imagine what Jesus is. Christ is in you and is playing out through you, you. Be yourself knowingly. You have to know your separate self. You have to understand how this identity is made up. When you understand the true passionate nature of this identity, and then you'll only then you'll realize, but it's not real. And the minute you realize that this identity isn't real, you realize what is that which animates us, the life spark, the life spark, the breath, the essence, the call to love, the call to be loving. And then you just take yourself less seriously. I've had those thoughts. So what? I'm feeling myself judging. So what? I'm aware. I'm now finally aware I'm judging. That's a huge step. That's a huge step. That takes you 6,000 incarnations to get to that. Can you imagine 6,000 incarnations in a woman's body? Yeah. Jeez, like, no wonder I've chosen the male. I'm teasing. Okay, don't take me seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Can we carry on? So just, Raj, just, just, thank you. Just look at yourself and go, this is love, knowing itself through this wonderful, with wonderful apparition called Raj. And now I accept this. And now I let it play out. I can see peace instead of this. I can, you know, what would you have me do? Where would you have me go? What would you have me see? There's another way to see this. The, the lessons are in the course. They're beautiful. But be kind to yourself and be gentle on yourself. When you can start here with self, you can then do it with everybody else. We try and fix the world and then heal. No, heal. And then it gets fixed. That's a great Thank answer. You. And I think it was very helpful to many people here, including myself. You know, because we all have the same, really the same story. Like it's a different story, but it's the same content, if you know what I mean. Yeah. 
No. I'll just quickly jump in a story. Here. 2015, David Hofmeyer and I shared a house in Ireland. You know, now David and I see the world completely different. You know, when David walks, you just see, you know, there's there's like angel music and there's little flowers that fall behind him and the wind blows and it's just amazing. When I walk past flowers dying, you smell motorcycle unburnt fuel, you know, and the fucking demons go scurrying in all sorts of directions. <laughs> and and David and I are sitting in the kitchen having a meal, just talking shit, you know, and the the lady who lent us her home. I'm going to forget her name now. Anyway, she was a, she worked as a social worker. She she helped autistic children, and she was just sitting in the kitchen watching David and I. And I had one of those moments where I'm observing myself, observing myself from somewhere, you know, me, myself, and Irene all in one. And I just glanced upon this most spectacular being. And there's David, the great teacher, and Luigi, the great mystic from Africa. And there's this remarkable, beautiful being who's given us, given us her home. Okay. And 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 equipped it with food and stuff, you know. I mean, she's living on this tiny little wage. And why do I know this? Because I I stayed for another week with her. And I went with her to all these little children's homes and she showed me around and she showed me the conditions and I realized how little she has. There's these great teachers, Luigi and, and David. We're nobody. We're nothing. There was, there was something remarkable. And in her head, she's like, oh, I don't know this stuff. I don't understand this non-dual language. Fuck that. You are divine. You're the Christ in living form. You're here, not for self, little self. You're here to serve autistic children. Wow. And there's the great David and the great Luigi from Africa. Where are the great teachers? We're nobody. The beauty is hidden. It's the lady behind the till, the guy driving the bus, the ambulance driver, the guy sweeping the roads. There's the beauty. This is just blah, blah, blah. Love I, it. Love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anna, uh, I do believe you're next. Go ahead and mute yourself. Yes. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm I'm from Sweden. So it's kind of new oh. in these groups. I, I perhaps you already have answered my question, <laughs> but I will take it anyway, and I will keep it. Try to keep it short. I have been ill a lot and last six months I've been like in a dark space of deep regrets, guilt, self-blame, grief and I'm I'm like then I found the course and it resonated a lot in me like that no other like spiritual teachings have has done. So I'm trying to understand what forgiveness is. And I'm I'm beginning to understand what like true forgiveness is. And it's about changing my perspective. Uh, but I'm I'm still like getting in some days I can just get so much grief or despair because I feel like my life is has has been a waste. My talents, I didn't have the uh, believe in myself or the courage to like be an artist or a dancer. When I was young, I didn't get much support in my like, talents. And now I feel I've started to dance like lately. And I feel, for example, like I just love to dance. I've started folk dance, Linda, you know, new kind of dances with other people. And I got so much grief the other night coming from a dance because I felt like, what if I had chosen dance with this life of mine, this lifetime? And I could have been a choreographer. I could have like created dances with like prisoners or young people, you know. I just so kind of saw my whole life how it could have been. 
and it it wasn't so it it like um, i feel like i have come to this life as a human as a woman and it's so much i haven't been able to do because lots of uh, like chronic illnesses or fatigue and stuff like that and i've tried some i have painted like therapy and so on but i'm i want i think i would like to find some atonement <laughs> uh yeah so that i can live in the now and not get trapped in like thoughts about the past and what i have missed if you can say something about this i feel like i have kind of got you humans emotions i feel everything so strong and it's it's really hard i feel it's really hard to be like a human being who feels everything so deep all the time of course um thank you for sharing um the whole dream is designed to to get us to focus on something that becomes so severe that it completely pulls us in to the pain, the hardness, the judgment of it. I, I want you to realize that you had to go through all of that non-committed life that you had to get to this point where you now look back and really appreciate, for example, movement, dance. Realize that you're only here, every single one of us, every single fracture is only here to awaken to self. Once we've awoken to self, a byproduct of that awakening to self is the sharing of our awakened self with our fractures. But it's not necessary. As you awaken to self, the mind is awakening. None of us are awakening. The dreaming mind is awakening. So imagine you're dreaming at night. And there's a whole lot of characters in your dream. And in your dream, you localize as yourself in your dream. And you play out a role. When you wake up in the morning, the, the you that you were in your dream and all the other characters dissolve as you awaken. The mind that is awakening, does, as we dissolve, the mind awakens. We don't awaken. We self-realize that this isn't real. Your life wasn't about how you contributed to this earth. Your life is purely getting to a point where you realize this isn't real. That's it. So beautiful. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it had to go through looking back and thinking, I've wasted my life. I could have fixed this. No, no, no. There was nothing to fix. You simply have to get to the realization this isn't real. I and all of this are the contents of one dreaming mind. I am that through which the dreamer experiences himself in this particular way. We're all exactly the same, playing out a slightly different role in one dreaming mind. The significance of our lives in this world is pointless. The real contribution is awakening to self. You do more for the collective by realizing self than you do by spending a life fixing others. Look, I'm a psychologist, so I can say this. You know, there's nobody more cooked than psychologists. That's why we study psychology, because we're so fucked up in our heads with so many multiple personalities. We need an entire audience in order to re realize our reflections and get back to self, you know? I mean, psychologists are cooked. Just all of us are cooked, okay? And um, <laughs> and I can say that. I'm one of them. And, uh, well, I don't practice anymore. No, I just do. The point is dance just go dance now i want you to pay attention go dance go play the minute that yak 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 starts just say no thanks now you're a gentle polite kind person i don't want you to say no thanks it's not going to work because no thanks has heard itself saying no thanks a thousand times i want you to turn around and tell it that voice go fuck yourself yeah, I, I, know I, want you to, I want you to say enough now, bugger off. What Jesus said in the Garden of Gethsemane when the devil in the red dress, the low top, she bugged him and she came and told him he can have the whole of paradise. And he said to him, get behind me, Satan. Okay. And so what I want you to say is get behind me thoughts. No, thanks. I'm not paying attention. 
I'm dancing. Now, you're not going to make me feel guilty. I should have done this. I could have done that. What if I got this earlier? What if I'd been more courageous? No, no, no. All of that was to take me to realize none of this is real, including the voice telling me that I should have and could have and would have. No, thanks. But don't just say no, thanks. Go fuck yourself. Because I want you, I want you to really get into that love. No, thanks. No, thanks. You're not going to get to me. I've just enjoyed dancing. I've just enjoyed movement. Now you want to pull me back. No, thanks. Hmm. That's where I've been my whole life. No, no, I'm going to dance. I'm going to celebrate the essence of myself, which is Christ, joyous likeness of being. No, thanks. And it's not going to happen the first time. It's going to do it again. And it's not going to leave you alone. And so you're going to teach yourself not to take it seriously. Yes. And when you do, watch the alignment. Because Christ aligns. It's pure alignment. Surrender to God is aligned with God. It's accept what is. I accept it, okay? I could have, I should have. I accept it. I'm here now. And now I choose to align with the joyous likeness of being. No thanks. Just straight back. Thank you, really. The vortex, it just pulls you straight back in. It starts with, I know. Yeah. I, should have, I should have been more sexy tonight, you know. Uh, oh, I should have smiled more. Oh, I should have. Fuck off. Piss off. Leave me alone. Just, I'm just enjoying the lightness of being. And as you conquer it, you can then become more gentle. Remember, the shadow self is just a forgotten memory desperately trying to be remembered. The self is the joyous lightness of being. So we don't want to shout at the mirror for too too long because eventually we're only shouting at ourselves. But I want you to just snap out of it and like, fuck off. Bugger off now. Enough. And then return. And after a while, you can go, no, thanks. No, thanks. No, you, won't even hear, you won't even hear it. After a while, it's like, Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> really, really helpful. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. That was really beautiful. Okay, Tess has her hand up. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself, Tess. Yes, yes. Hi, Luigi. I'm Tess. Hi, Tess. Hi. Um, I just spent uh, nine days with Rananda. He's also a self-realized master. He was uh, he was the, the um, a pupil of master teacher of the Endeavor Ac Academy back then in America, and now he is in the Netherlands. He lives here now for twenty five years. So I went there, and uh, yes, it's all about a self realization. That's a pure act of love. That's the highest act of love we can provide for our brothers. I agree fully with that. I'm with you on that. And I have a question. So I'm not. I'm not very well in the in the uh, the things you said um, uh, earlier. My poor understanding of the spiritual realms and things like that. So I have a very simple question. <laughs> you said um, when you are in the spiritual realm. You have uh, the awareness that you are missing something, that love. Eh? You were explaining that with the ceiling, eh? that you the attraction. So, so my very simple question is, why not do true forgiveness in that spiritual realm? Because there's not enough of a polarity for something to upset us in the spirit world. It's so beautifully hidden by the dreaming mind that there's not enough polarity for us to. So let's say, let's say you and I die tonight and I murdered you. So I murdered you. And as you were dying, I got hit by a bus. We both die at the same time. And now we floaty floaty in the spirit world. And we just arrive at um, international arrivals. There you go. Bing. There you are, and I just arrived now. International arrivals, and I just murdered you on planet Earth. In the spirit world, it was like, how's it, Tess? And you're like, how's it, Lou? Did I murder you properly? You went, yeah, yeah, you should have done it a little bit quicker, you know? Why did I have to bleed for two hours? And then we go and have a cup of angel juice, and we're all cool. 
In the spirit world, we don't get angry. We don't get upset because there's none of that enough. We don't have the the central cortex and, and the firing order of the body-mind. So there's none of that polarity there. It's just like, okay, we were supposed to play that role. I was supposed to murder you. You were supposed to die quicker. It's over. So there's no forgiveness there. Yeah, I get that, but I but but I mean you have a you you're talking now about the, the 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 cortex and the polarity and but but everything is mine. So yeah, but we're unaware of it. We're unaware that everything is mine in the spirit world. In the spirit world, we think we're spirits. We think we're separate spirits. We're not aware we're one collective whole. We still see ourselves as separate beings in the spirit world. It's true. It, yeah. We only start to realize the collective one mindness in in duality in the spirit world. We're completely oblivious to this. The biggest challenge with course students is they conceptually understand the non-duality, all of it, and then they have such heavy pressure on on themselves to just transcend it all and just like be like Ramana Maharshi sitting in an ashram talking to the cow, walking up the mountain, coming back down, sitting on the bench. You don't have to do that. You've already realized it's one indivisible cell. You know, the shift is coming. You know, this whole story, the shift is coming. Once you realize, even at the faintest level, that this isn't real, and you put this body down, you don't return to the spirit world. It's done. You've already got it. We're putting so much, and the ego is so clever. It says, okay, this person's just understood oneness. Let me make it complicated and tell them that they have to become transcendent and walk on water and turn um, Jack Daniels into rum. And they have to go around healing people and miracles. It's not enough. You have to be like this thing you've imagined, this guru. You don't have to do any of that. You've already realized the oneness of self. You've already, this isn't, you're not fully engaged in this already. That's enough for you to transcend this. The shift is that as we return to spirit world, there's just going to be thousands of missing beings in this moment in time. There's such a huge transcendence moment happening right now. The only problem is you transcend and the ego pulls you straight back in because you're still finding judgment and you're still asking polarity questions. You're already there. You've got it. I mean, how many people in the world realize this is a dream? Right. One percent. Good question. One percent. How many people really, 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 really get that this is a dream? Zero, 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 zero point one percent. It's already the shift is so significant. The the minute that the non-dual, the Advita, the Upanishads, the Tao Te Ching spread around the world, it was preparing us for the next layer. And the next layer is the forgiveness. And where's forgiveness? It's found in that little blue book, the gold writing. It's already there in the spirit world. We're just so okay with everything that there's no need to forgive because we're okay. But there's something missing and we don't know what it is and we can't figure it out no matter how much we try. We project and we figure it out. But how do we get to figure it out? We've got to get to such a point where we get so frustrated and so irritated that eventually we scream. We eventually have the courage to scream up into the heavens and say, fuck you, God. We have to get to that point where it's like enough. And then we say, there has to be a better way. And the voice says, okay, you're ready. And at that moment is your transcendence already. Now we start to try and intellectualize. Now you're going to read a whole book and it's 669 and manual for teachers. And oh, this so no, 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 just put all of that aside, return. The teachers, those of us that blah, 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 blah. You know how we learn? Not through devotion. We learn by talking. Teachers are the most, they go the furthest round the bend to become awake to self. The student that's quiet goes much quicker. Teachers are just, we're the most, the ones that teach are the ones that go through the most difficult route 
And they got to assimilate so many different concepts in order to put it into a palatable story. Look at a teacher. That person's going through hell. You're already there. Let the idea of I'm not there go. You're already there. The problem is, and why you we have a tendency to return, is we still have an attachment. We still want to fix something. We still think we need to transcend something. We still think we're not good enough. Oh, because my master, and he's just so quiet. Ramana is designed Ramana. Luji's are designed like this. You know, there's no way I'd have an ashram unless it was filled with cats. You know, human beings irritate me. Cats are just wonderful. Um, you know, I'm great on Facebook because you're at a distance. People want to come around. I want to hug me. I want to run away. They want to hug anyone. Hugging leads to 11 minutes, and that's not cool. And um, we're all designed uniquely. Just, just, just accept self. You're okay. Your teacher's designed your way. You're designed your way. I'm designed. We're all designed. Just you've got it already. You've already got it. Why don't we get it in the spirit world? It's just too nice. It's like baby blue bath water and everybody's got an ice cream and there's wonderful music playing and everything's just cool. And how long could you be happy for without some sort of drama? And that's why we project back. And it's through the projection that we go, yeah, enough of this shit. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. So you, we have to get do it. the work here. We you have to it. do the work here. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get it. I get it. Yeah, I get it now. <laughs> you've, had, you've had it for a long time already, Tess. <laughs> you've had it for a long time. <clears throat> you know, we all just need gentle reminders every ever so often. Um, ultimately, what we get to, all the teachers really doing, Lloyd is a typical example. Sorry, I'm Lloyd. I'm talking about you as if you're not even here. Is, <laughs> um, not really here. I'm not really here. <laughs> um, is Lloyd is just refining. He's refining the language, for example. He's refining the language. He's got it already. It's just refine, refine, refine. And just less words, less words, less words, less. You know, Steve and I have a tendency to, we're not very, um, uh, what's the word? We don't hold back. We have a tendency to use 10 words for what could just be used with one. Steve forces himself by having shorter videos. Look at my videos. They're six and a half days long. Um, <laughs> it's it's just refine, 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 refine. Oh, so People true. People are used to watching me talk. If you meet me in my social life, I hardly speak. I somehow yeah. doubt that. <laughs> no, I, I really, I very seldomly, I live alone. I have three cats. Um you know, uh, most of my social activity is on a motorcycle, so I'm wearing a helmet. I don't have to listen to someone. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I am in an office and I'm in a leadership position, so it's often just pure instructions and, and getting feedback, sitting in a room, watching presentations, say yes, no, go, don't go. Uh, I, I'm very seldomly am in direct communication with humans at the moment. I live a very reclusive life. My choice. Yeah. Thank God I mean, it is never about a form. Yeah, exactly. I mean, for example, today I haven't spoken to a single person. In actual fact, I haven't spoken to anyone since yesterday morning. Lunchtime. Lunchtime was the last time I spoke to someone, either on the phone or face to face. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm. Now, do so we practically, it boils down on we take our stage of development in forgiveness with us in the spiritual realm. 100%. Okay. Whatever consciousness we leave here, yeah. we move into a, into a, a, a similar consciousness level there. Yeah. So yeah. whatever we yeah. still haven't let go of here is what we're going to prepare ourselves for there and then come back. So when you yeah. come back, Let's say there's seven levels. Let's just use this as an example. So let's say you're at level three and you return to the spirit world level three. When you come back, you come back into a level two. Use your formative years to set up level three and to trigger you into level four. And then you spend the rest of your between teens and twenties reaffirming your level three and then you get into your level four lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how we cycle. 
and and I'm talking levels. I mean, it's all seamless, but yeah, just to put it into some palatable. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you know why it's why it's for me why it is important for me because I know I, I meet a lot of people who are in the misunderstanding that when they die they come in the spiritual realm and then everything is uh, forgiven and done and but that's not true because you take that you have to forgive everything I mean uh, uh, at one point huh so you take that with you and that is what I feel and what I. So you confirmed that now for me. Yeah, the the, the forgiveness, the, the the challenge of forgiveness is is the following: forgiveness in itself is nothing. No. The purpose of the exercise of forgiveness is to bring us into the non-dual understanding. Yes. Is nothing to get to that happened. second last stage. I've done this to, to myself, and then, and then, oh, nothing's really happened. Yeah. And yeah. if we didn't have that process of we think we need to forgive, we wouldn't have gotten to that. It's only I'm only forgiving myself for forgetting, but how can I forget what I am if I am always this? Okay, there it is, over. But the challenge is that we can practice forgiveness and we think we have nothing left to forgive. As long as we're still attached and we think we still have to fix something here, we're back. If you think, oh, I've got to come back and save dolphins or feed the children, save the animals or save the kitty cats, you know, you're back. Because there's nothing to save you. There's nothing to fix you. No, I guess I guess the whole forgiveness process is to become aware of what I truly am. That's it. Forgiveness is a sleight of hand, just to make us realize what we truly are. Yeah. So, and that is beautiful. Yeah. And I'm very humble in that regard. If that is love, that feels like love. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now, Luigi, are you okay with one more question? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Doreen. You can go ahead and unmute yourself. A mute and a lower hand. There we go. Well, first, I want to thank you, Luigi, for being so outspoken and using the F-O expression. I do not even dare um, <laughs> use the unabbreviated form on YouTube. Uh. I love, love, love it because it's so in line with what the Holy Spirit has been showing me these past weeks. And I think it's also in line with what you, Stephanie, have been channeling. And that is that we have to stop, really quit, playing small mm. and be the bright, very powerful spirits that we truly are. And that we also uh, should stop pleasing people and um, no private thoughts. Yeah. So playing small, which is basically false humility, yeah. if exactly. we uh, stop doing that, we're halfway. Is that a correct understanding, Luigi? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I mean, I mean what's spiritual, you know? Um, no one's ever going to accuse me of being humble. Because there's just too much passion. And people mistake passion with grandiosity this is just my nature mm. this is a 150 percent adrenaline until it's quiet but when it communicates it communicates this joyous being through its now you know had i been raised had i stayed in mozambique as a kid and grown up i would have been gentle i've been an artist i would have been musical i came into a warring country you know, where I had to learn to defend myself, protect my family, protect the people I care about. I needed to learn. I mean, I was a pro kickboxer. I was a professional fighter, you know, with an academic mind. I mean, who? where have you heard of kickboxers study architecture, you know, and then <laughs> psychology and then marketing and, and this achieving, this need to acquire and be and prove and all of that had to go through, you know, um, 
And, you know, as I started my spiritual journey, I really tried to dial it down, you know. And when I was that sort of very famous South African uh, stage psychic and I was doing the crossing over and the shows were just filled, massive auditoriums with people coming to hear from dead people, it just didn't feel genuine. I had to dial it down. I had to be, you know, and um, and then I stepped away from it for a long 10 years. I just didn't want to talk. I wrote, but I didn't want to talk. And I did. I just got away from it all. And when I came back in it, I realized what the world, what my mirrors need is someone who's just authentic. So just be this, you know. I'm done with the Armani suits. I'm done with the trying to be this. I'm trying, I'm done with trying to, I'm never, I mean, those of you that know David Hoffmeister, I speak of David because I know him. David just walks in the room and he just smiles. If I walked into the room and smiled, people would go scurrying because it looks like I'm growling. You know, when I smile, I look like I'm about to bite your fucking head off. <laughs> and, you know, it just doesn't look right. It's like, this is something, if I'm smiling, I'm about to cause chaos. So, I just I decided to just be authentic, and those of us that have that have str struggled with trying to be holier than that, they're gonna they're gonna see this mirror and they're gonna go, it's okay. Luigi said, "Fuck, it's okay." And at the end of the day, it's YouTube. It's your tube. What you say on it, you say on it. Who gives a shit what people think? People think they think. We know they don't think. Who gives a fuck, really? It's all just bullshit anyway. You know, <laughs> it's okay if Don Corleone says, "Hey." Fuck you. But if if Luigi says fuck, oh, it's supposed to be spirit. I'm not supposed to be anything. I'm not trying to appease anyone. And the greatest, the greatest downfall we have is this idea of the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek can keep the fucking earth. Who wants to come back here in the first place? <laughs> keep the damn fucking place. I want to ascend to Christ mine. <laughs> Be yourself knowingly, as authentically and passionately and with total sincerity. And and this is it. You know, inherit the earth. What do you want the earth for when you've got heaven? Right. It's it you're being bullshitted because the, the powers that be, the powers that manipulate, the fallen mind that is, you know, the fallen mind, the fallen mind, it wants you to be meek and and a pushover and a people pleaser. What's a people please? You want to get you want to get validation. That's what people pleasing is. You're looking desperately for validation from another ego, as if that ego giving you validation makes you that. There's not a single one of us on this entire planet that doesn't use toilet paper, except some people down south in the USA, apparently. But other than that, you know, it's just it's we're all exactly the same. We all exact same fears. Everybody has the same problems everybody thinks and there's not a single person on this planet that looks in the mirror and goes i'm perfect not one even the ones that appear perfect still have a problem have a judgment so it's just to really be authentic to one another and go listen we're all living the same problem and when you can accept self and when you no longer pay a single you don't give no more attention to your own thoughts so your thought forms thought forms so you're never going to pay another attention to a thought in form either it's either thought forms or thoughts in form. It's all the same illusion. And it's to, to be true to thyself, to be thyself knowingly. What the fuck does that mean? It means to abide. Just sit. And just get to that point where I realize I don't actually know anything. Because there's no one who can know anything. For the one that knows doesn't know anything. Uh, right. <laughs> Yeah. It only knows it's and I'm now now I'm now I'm really fucking it up because now I'm using trying to use words for the silent stillness, which is joyous love ever extending. It's impossible. And so what could anyone try and correct you on, fix you on? It's all just concessions of a sleeping mind, symbols twice removed and twice further removed as well. Just and you know, we want to be kind and compassionate. And we beat ourselves up. We're not good enough. I'm not the... Shut up. Shut up. Of course you are. The very essence, the life force that animates you is God. Because it's Christ and Christ comes from God. It's the extension. That is it, you most beautiful being. 
How dare you beat yourself up? How dare you allow anyone else to beat you up? How dare you hurt anyone? It's We're one indivisible love. One. And simply forgot. We simply forgot. Now, the Course is going to tell us a story and absorb the power. It's going to go huge. Hey, you're not going to figure it out by trying to figure it out. You're going to figure it out by allowing it to be done for you. We can't fix ourselves. We can't fix anyone. We can't fix this. Because there's nothing to fix. There's no one to fix. You can't fix an illusion. You can't fix an illusion. You can't fix the world. You can't fix the body. You can't fix a mind that doesn't exist. You simply return it willingly in alignment with what is and always has been. Silent stillness extends. What is peace? Silent stillness. And what happens when that silent stillness blows through? It moves. And as silent stillness moves, it extends. And through the app apparition, that extension of silent stillness, the peace of God extends through you. And that movement is felt as joy. And what is joy and peace? In my book, it's called ice cream. In your book, it's called unconditional love. I only incarnated for ice cream, coffee, cigarettes, and motorcycles. That's the only reason, you know, <laughs> my excuse. But it's just the, and I call that my language is the infinite lightness, the light heartness of being. To truly not take all of this seriously, our ascension seriously, our spirituality, seriously, the core seriously. I mean, guys, I read the living shit out of this book. Check this out. <laughs> it looks like my book <laughs> I, I, I read this thing until it was I've had to glue it back together I mean Me geez, did I take this thing I never took anything in this world seriously I took this thing seriously yeah. now it's just fun you know now I just use it to smack the cats with you know and um, <laughs> that's a joke it's a joke <laughs> I would never damage the book like that. I use it space. <laughs> it's uh, I can't take anything seriously. And you know, we've got a I don't know if Lloyd's here, but yeah, Lloyd well, is now doing these 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 videos where he's interviewing. And you know it's beautiful. Where's Lloyd? Is he here? Lloyd like, is just yeah. just pure lightheartedness. And that's what we need more of. We need lightheartedness. We need to take ourselves less seriously. Look, there were guys like Ken, and I, I will forever love and be respectful to Ken, and I'll forever be respectful and grateful to Gary Renard because he really brought this on for me, and Wayne Dyer, um, <coughs> and Neil Donald Walsh, Conversations with God, straight out of the course. I'm so grateful for those, those that brought me into this line. But the next wave of teachers, so Ken, the fundamentalist, and you have the David Hoffmeisters and 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 um, Gary Renards. Take that fundamental to the next level. Now you've got a new wave of teachers coming through. Mm -hmm. And lightheartedness is what's required. To yeah. stop taking ourselves so seriously and stop taking this thing so seriously and get into semantics and start arguing about words and what, what, what. Mm -hmm. I love... I love, I've been reading the Tao Te Ching since I was a kid. I've had this book with me since I was nine years old. You know, it's an important book for me. It was, you know, now I just keep it to show off when people come visit on my <laughs> table. Everybody can think I'm so wise. Me too. Um, it's just to bring the lightness, of the lightness of being, the joy. The son of God needs to remember to laugh again. Yes, we're all going to go through a deep period, there are six stages of development of trust, but you want to go from stage one to stage seven and a half out of that book, bring the joy back in, bring the laughter back in, bring the authenticity and sincerity. It's impossible. It's impossible to be lighthearted and serious at the same time. Yeah. But it's very simple to be sincere and lighthearted. Those two work hand in hand. 
You know, try and take someone seriously and then when they're telling a joke, you can't. It's impossible. Sincerity, you can bring a very serious subject through with sincerity and laughter. And that's my contribution. I mean, where else? You guys can't arrest me. You know, um, I'm out of the reach of most coarse communities. The Foundation for Inner Peace Police can't come to South Africa. They'll get hijacked at the airport. <laughs> and um, the Holy Spirit has works in mysterious ways so i can get away with murder here and what better way to bring i mean south africa apartheid all of that horrible horrible terrible stuff fought so hard against that and here we are this is a country where everything is accepted all religions all sexualities we're a complete mix match of everything we all just find our way around it we wing it there's never electricity. There's never this. There's never running water. It's all, and we just wing it. We just make fun of it. We just get along. And just that's it. Just bring the joy back in. Just bring the joy back in. Let's make this course light. Let's become light as teachers. Yeah. And 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 let go of the self-judgment. Let go of the, the heaviness that we put on ourselves, this expectation to be, to be, you're never, ever going to be like Ramana or Jesus or Buddha or Krishna or Luji, Puji. Forget it. You couldn't be like this no matter what you tried. A hundred years from now, when they make a book, when they write a book about Luji, the ascended master, <laughs> okay, he's gonna he's gonna be sitting with his hand in that in that sort of you know. And he's gonna, and his other fingers are gonna do this, you know. And then, and and they don't understand why they do that. And someone's gonna write a book because he was talking about duality becoming oneness. What they didn't realize is, in the one hand, there was a glass of Jack Daniels, and in the other hand, there was a cigarette, and that's why he was doing symbol. And now they've written a whole <laughs> fucking book on what it means. You know. That's what we've done to our brothers that came, sisters and brothers that came before us and brought us to this new awakened awareness. We take it so seriously when we're really wanting to be. I mean, look at Ramana Maharshi. He's always got a smile on his face. Um, look at Neem Karoli Baba. They're just, they're just light up. What do we do? Take ourselves so damn seriously. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're just going to carry on now. One more question, and then we're going to we're going to call it a, a, a wrap in terms of the video because we don't want to go too over, you know, uh, like one hour and forty five minutes. So we'll, we're 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 going to. There's no time. Uh, yeah, I know, but I just want to mention that we're going to stop the recording after Tammy's question, but then we're going to stay. Like we're not going to actually end the meeting, so everyone can do what they want after that. So go ahead and Tammy, unmute yourself. Oh, there's no question. I just want to say um, I'm so grateful that Leon Russell introduced me to Luji um, via May a Course Be With You, because Luji, I've been sort of, you know, we're Facebook friends, whatever, and I just, I don't know, I fucking love you. And that's all <laughs> I can say. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. You are a reflection <laughs> that tells me I'm okay. So anyways, thank you. Love you, brother. Thanks for that. Really appreciate that. Yeah. And and let's be that for each other, you know. Yeah. Let's let's remind ourselves it's all okay to be different fractions of one beautiful eternal mind. Yeah. Very, very beautiful. I can't say enough. I, I don't really have anything to say, which is a really good sign. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm speechless. I mean, I'm too. I'm speechless. That's a really good way to to, to put it. Yeah. I'm just gonna you know what's a just one final thing is what's so beautiful about this is you know, fractured mirror. Imagine this massive mirror and it just fractures. And at first we just look the other way. And now we're finally looking. And as we look and glance across and we see a little fracture of ourselves and we're all just reflections of one indivisible self. You know, I was watching Stephanie's video about a couple of days ago and talking angels. And I know that you know what you're talking. Uh, but you're palat you're making it palatable for your audience, and it's just so beautiful. And then I watch um, Steve, and he's bringing through some really tough dialogue, you know. And, and then I watch Lloyd, and he's just gone and pulled the piss out of everybody, and you know, 
it's like that that picture I posted of Jesus showing his butt cheeks. Man, fuck, people got so pissed off with me about that. <laughs> like, just read the column and you'll see what I'm getting at. The re I actually, originally, I just put a just a normal Jesus face up. And then I thought, nah, they're going to miss it. They're not going to take it. They're not going to read. They're not going to want to read what's down below. I need to piss them off in order for them to realize. So I put Jesus butt cheek. <laughs> yeah. There was a reason why I did that. I want to trigger you to go deeper. Right. <clears throat> you know, um, of course, I'm so grateful. Jesus, Yeshua Ben Joseph. Yes. At some stage, as you get to that final step, even Ken would talk about top of the ladder. There's no you and I and Jesus in heaven. It's just one indivisible self. And um, but what's beautiful about the course is the I amness is hap and I'm watching it daily. There's a realization happening daily, and I can I'm gonna use a concession, I can sense it. There's an ever-growing sense awareness of it. I'm we're collecting ourselves into ourself. Mm. And it's happening here. Now, beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay, we're going to invite everybody to unmute themselves and just let's just give this love back to Luji. Thank you so much, Luji. Love you, Luji. That was great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Luji. I love you. Thank you.